Hey everybody, today we'll be making this kitten and a pumpkin using Blender's modeling and sculpting tools. There's going to be a time lapse at the end of me texturing and lighting it if you want to see how that's set up. And the project files will be available on Patreon if you're interested in supporting this channel and that type of content. So let's start off by making our pumpkin. We're going to add a UV sphere. And let's go into edit mode and we're just going to make this a little bit more of a pumpkin shape. I'm going to start by kind of scaling on the Z axis here. I'm going to turn on proportional editing, grab this bottom one, hit control plus to kind of grab a few layers there and go back into the front view. And I'm just going to kind of flatten this out. I want my proportional editing to be kind of high and I'll bring that up there. And that should be a good start for the bottom of the pumpkin. Let's go to the top. Let's grab this vertice and bring out there. And then we want to kind of bring this inside of the pumpkin. Great, so that gives us kind of a, a good starting shape for the pumpkin. Switch over to edge loop mode, and let's go ahead and alt click to select these edge loops. Now you can make these kind of a uniform even selection. I'm going to kind of select around here randomly. These are going to be the indents of our pumpkin. So just select whatever ones you think will look best and make it your own. And I'm going to turn off proportional editing and come out here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale those inwards. Now you can kind of see we have a good pumpkin shape there to start. Now we're going to switch over into sculpting view and we're going to hit control seven, which will send us into the back mode. I'm going to select the flatten and I'm going to bump the strength all the way up. And then I'm just going to drag back and forth around here on the bottom a bit. Kind of flatten that out. And if we go back into the front view, you can see that we've kind of gotten rid of some of the distortion that came from us kind of scaling in everything there. We can actually do that on the top just a tiny bit though, because a lot of time pumpkins do kind of come into a crease here in the center. Great. Let's go back out into the object view and look at what we have. I think that bottom of that pumpkin could still be a little flatter. So we're going to go into edit mode and we're going to grab that single vertice. We'll expand out there with the control plus and let's turn back on proportional editing. And let's just bring that up just a little bit because pumpkins kind of have a small indent on the bottom as well. And great, now we have kind of a, a base shape for our pumpkin. So let's go ahead and make the top piece. So I'm gonna switch back to edge loop mode. I'm gonna alt click that. Actually, let's start with the vertice here in the center and we'll just expand out by hitting control numpad plus twice. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and move that up on the Z axis. Then I'm gonna come back down here. I'm going to remove these by pressing X and deleting the faces. And this is a good start. So now let's go over to our modify panel. Let's add a solidify modifier. And we're just gonna add some depth to this pumpkin. So I'm gonna do 0.1 and I think that looks good. So I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface. And I don't want the creases to lose all their form there. So what I'm going to do is go back into edit mode. I'm gonna use control R and I'm gonna kind of bring that down and that'll help just add a little bit of form there. And same here at the center, I'm gonna add one there. Also gonna add one edge loop towards the top. Come back out on the object mode and shade smooth. And you can see here, we have a pretty good start to a pumpkin. So what we're going to do next is we're going to separate this from the mesh and we'll add a stem. So let's go back into edit mode. We press L while hovering over one of these vertices. We will select the whole top and we will hit P. We will separate by selection. So now we have two pieces there. So let's go ahead and name those to avoid confusion. That'll just help keep our scene organized. So now we're gonna use sculpting tools to increase the crease is here just a tiny bit and we're gonna use it to kind of add a little bit of random variety to this pumpkin and then we're gonna use it to add the stem up here and texture that. So first, let's go ahead and add another cube. 
and we're going to go into front view. We're going to scale that way down, move that up on the z-axis, and this is what we're going to be using to make our little stem. So let's just take that down, move that down there, and you can make your stem whatever shape or size you want, but you can follow along with me. I'm going to add a subdivision surface there, going to edit mode. I'm going to add an edge loop there, give it kind of a flat base like that. I'm going to switch over to face mode. And I'm just going to extrude this up and turn off proportional editing so that I can rotate this and kind of move that around. And that'll just kind of give me a little stem to start. So I'm going to apply that subdivision and then I'm going to select these two objects and I'm going to hit Control J. Now that these objects are joined together, I'm going to go ahead and apply the subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to bump that render down to two because I really only want one level. So I'm going to hit apply. And we're going to go in sculpt mode and we're going to remesh these so that we can kind of join these. So we want to pay attention to the voxel size here. You don't want to set it too low or your machine may crash. I'm going to try 0.01. I find that this kind of maintains most of my geometry, but I'm still able to process it quickly. So let's hit remesh. And there we go. We can see that we've kept most of the shape there. If we go back out on the object mode, we can turn shade smoothing on again and see that it still looks pretty similar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into sculpt mode. I'm going to grab this smooth brush here, and I'm going to go around and kind of smooth out some of these creases and things that have come from the low poly geometry. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this in the base more. Now I'm just going to fast forward through the smoothing process. Okay, so for the smoothing process, you can see that I'm really just kind of removing any portion that looks kind of like low res geometry. When you remesh your object, you're going to kind of get that because it's going to kind of base it off the shape of the polygon. So a quick smoothing pass can really help out. And you can see here, I just kind of set the strength at the one and I'm moving around and kind of doing that. So now that we've kind of smoothed out that base of the top of the pumpkin, let's go ahead and start adding some detail into the stem and we can maybe add a little bit of creasing back into here. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select my crease tool. Right now I have the strength set relatively low. I'm going to try that up high all the way to one and I'm just going to add just a little bit of creases kind of in here because some of that was kind of removed during the smoothing process and I still want to keep a little bit of that shape. Just some small details there, nothing fancy. I'm going to go back to the smoothing brush and we're going to use that to smooth out the base of the stem here. Now I don't want that to be so intense, so let's try 0.5 for the strength. And I'm just going to kind of move back and forth along here and that'll just help kind of blend this into the base. Because whenever you kind of remesh, you can see that you get a little bit of messy geometry where things are kind of intersecting. So we're just trying to cure that a bit. Now I'm actually going to come over here to the crease tool because the stem kind of has a harsh meeting. So I'm going to leave that strength at one. And I'm going to go back here and add in some of that separation again. Careful not to ruin any of the smoothing. I'm just holding shift to kind of smooth out some of the edges there if I feel that I've added too much crease and just move around and just kind of play with it. You don't have to make yours look exactly like mine. Okay, great. So now we kind of have a stem on our pumpkin and I'd actually like to add a couple lines on here. So what the clay strips tool is going to do is just kind of in a square shaped pattern, it's going to draw some shapes on there. So if I make the radius bigger and bump the strength all the way up, you can see it's just kind of drawing some just little square lines there. And I'm just going to kind of go around there and just kind of add in some just random geometry there. So I'm actually going to use the flatten tool to kind of flatten out the tip of this and hopefully give us more of a crease on the edges. So let's go ahead. I'm going to crank the strength up to one and put that radius up. I'm going to kind of change my view so I'm right on the top. And it's going to paint back and forth across here to kind of flatten that out. And you can see that that tip isn't so round anymore. And then I'm just going to go back over here to my clay strips and reduce that radius and just add just kind of a few circular motions here. And that'll just kind of help 
keep it looking too smooth on top. And there we go. Now we kind of have our little pumpkin with a stem. Now if you want, you can go through and you can actually use these clay strips to kind of add maybe a few imperfections or to kind of just bump up some of the edges of these if you want to further exaggerate that look. But just adding these kind of little details and things keeps it from looking too uniform and kind of adds some character to it. I'm gonna go around the edge here, maybe kind of bolster some of these edges with these clay strips. Now let's move on to the main pumpkin and what we can kind of do to add some character there. So let's go ahead and enter sculpt mode on this pumpkin. Now I'm pretty happy with how this looks overall, so I'm not gonna do much here. What I am going to do is I'm gonna start with the crease and I just want to exaggerate some of these creases here. Now, you can modify your strength to do however much you want. I'm just going to leave mine on one. I'm going to set my radius to a bit lower. And I'm just going to kind of go through and at random points increase some of the crevices here and things like that. There's really no right or wrong way to do this part. Just kind of go through and just add a bit of variety. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to select the grab tool and I'm going to set my radius to very large and I'm just going to leave my strength up here around 0.5 because I don't want to really mess with it too much. And I'm actually just going to kind of rotate around the pumpkin and just grab some parts here and kind of pull them out. And this is just again to kind of break some of that uniformity to add a bit of realism to it. You can see that can kind of help you randomize the look there. So with that, we have a pretty decent looking pumpkin. So we're going to move on to modeling the cat. And we'll just move that up in the Z here. We're just going to kind of scale that face down on the Z. We'll go ahead and move that in there. Let's go to the side view, scale them in on the Y a bit, kind of flatten the face there. And we'll just move that face forward on the Y. And then let's go ahead and enter into here. I'm gonna hit slash there so that we can isolate this. Let's go into edit mode and turn on proportional editing. And let's just grab a few of these vertices, kind of drag them down like that to give it more of a little cat shape for the head there. That looks good. I think that'll work for what we wanna do. We can maybe go into the front view here and kind of flatten out this bottom just ever so slightly and bring that back up. Now let's go ahead and add some ears. So we will go back into edit mode, switch to face mode, and we'll take these four faces here and we will extrude those out, scale those in without proportional editing, and then we'll rotate that and grab that and bring that kind of down. We want his ears to kind of look like they're flattened out since he has a pumpkin on his head. We'll go ahead, we'll grab this, turn on proportional editing again. We will bring that back down a bit and that'll just kind of flatten that out. Now I'm going to delete this half of the cat. I'm going to go into object mode and solid. I'm going to add a mirror modifier just so I don't have to remake that ear and hit apply. Let's kind of look at what that ear looks like from the side view. And that should be a good start. So then now we'll give him some little paws. So let's go back to where we can see the pumpkin and we will add a little sphere. And we're just gonna give him just kind of a, a tiny little paw there in the front. I'm just going to move here so I can see that. Move that on the X and move that back into the cat. Hit duplicate. Let's move that back over to this side. Now let's scale those paws out on the Y just a tiny bit and that just gives it a little bit of kind of an oval shape. And it's okay if they're intersecting with the pumpkin. Now let's take all these and let's join that. And then we're going to isolate that so we can see just that. Let's go into sculpt mode and let's go ahead and remesh. We'll use the same settings as before, 0 0.01. 
And as you can see, it's kind of gotten rid of our smooth shading. So we're just going to go ahead and do a smoothing pass just like before. And I'm just going to fast forward through that. So now let's go ahead and make these paws a little more paw-like. We're going to grab the flatten tool. And we're just going to go down to the bottom here. And we're just going to kind of flatten out the bottom there a bit on both of these paws. Nothing extreme. He's pretty small in the pumpkin and we won't be able to see all these small details anyways. Let's go to the front and we're actually going to kind of flatten out his face just a little bit. And we'll grab that smooth tool and kind of smooth out some of the lumps and things we just made through flattening there. And same here on the paws. Now let's actually go over here and take the grab tool, pull these out just a little bit, just so they look a little bit less like spheres. Likewise, I'm going to kind of grab these ears and play with those a bit. And then I'm going to come up here to the top of the head. And I got this kind of little bump in the head, so I'm going to drag that down a bit, and then I'm going to smooth that out. And then we're going to go back out to object mode and pan out. Take the top of the pumpkin, and we're just going to push that down under the cat's hat. We're going to go to side view. We're going to go ahead and rotate that. Let's reset the origin, origin to geometry. And then we can go ahead, kind of retake that, put that on the cat's head. And that should be a good start there. If you want, you can give them a little bit of a body there. So we can just go ahead and grab that cat. Let's go into isolation mode. We can go ahead and add a cube. Let's subdivide this cube. Scale that down, move that up here. We're just going for a very general shape so that you can kind of see something in the pumpkin. And then I'm just going to shade smooth that. And then if you want, you can hit Control J and you can join these, kind of remesh them and fit that out there. So I'm actually pretty happy with how this is looking now. So I'm going to go through now and do a texture painting, lighting and rendering pass. You can follow along in this time lapse to get an idea of how I did that. I'm actually just going to start with some kind of gradient textures and then add in a few details here into the crevices and things like that. Of course, I'm going to draw some eyes onto the cat and I'll be using my clay shader tutorial clay shader to toss that on here. And then for lights, I'm just going to give it a strong backlight and then kind of some big area lights around it. Just using some kind of warm colors and things like that to kind of bring out the warm colors of a pumpkin. I'm going to add a little light inside of the pumpkin here to kind of give it that glowing candlelit look inside. Thank you again for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what other videos you would like to see. Again, these files are available on Patreon if you want access to them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and subscribe for more.